Wow, this is amazing. I never knew I was going to be here. Two and a half years ago. God, thank you. Two and a half years ago, I prayed God for this moment. And I know that he's good and, and everything I went through since I was a kid and being standing in front of you guys. I mean, I want to cry, but I, I, can't, I just can't. This is me, that cute guy, it's me. I don't know what happened later, <laughs> but trust me, it's me. My name is Omar Vasquez. I'm from Ocotlan, Jalisco, close to Guadalajara. So I got my charros, the Jalisco hat. Um, I, I remember the picture before that. I remember that picture very well because uh, I was very happy. I was a happy boy. Even though my dad went to buy cigarettes and never came back. I passed 18 years, and I, I didn't meet my dad, but I was happy in my town, running around. And I remember one day, um, the doctor told my mom, she, she, he told my mom, I'm sorry, Angelita, your son, he's not going to be able to walk anymore. I'm a person, I'm a guy with two bodies together, just right in the middle, my right hand side is perfect, and the other one, it's perfect too, but it's smaller. So the only, the only reason why I always wear Crocs is for two reasons. Number one, because I love them. They're comfortable. <laughs> and number two, because I can't wear tennis shoes or, or, or shoes or tennis shoes because my left uh, uh, foot, it's too small and it's painful. And I went through a lot of stuff. So we grew up without, without a house, without a food, but I was happy. And then... She's the most important and beautiful person I ever met. Angelita, my mom. When I was that, that age, we crossed the border illegally to California. After my dad uh, never came, um, coming back, me and my two brothers, I'm the youngest of the three of them. And then she risked her life for me and my brothers to give us a better opportunity a better chance to live. So I remember she walked 10 hours barefoot on the mountains in Tijuana to go to San Isidro. We walked 14 hours, me and her, and we we were about to cross the border and jump the fence. She was short and shabby, so she couldn't do it. She couldn't climb it. So these guys, they pulled her up, and with all these wires, she cut her belly, her chest, and she started bleeding and bleeding a lot. I thought it was the end of my mom that night. And I was eight years old. I got on my knees and said, God, please don't leave me alone. I mean, you help me with my leg. You help me with my brain because even my brain is smaller. My brain, my arm, my leg, everything. I started to cry and I heard this voice. Lady from Ocotlan, from Guadalajara. No sea pinche chillón, cabrón. I was like, no chille, don't be a girl. No chille, yo estoy bien. She got up right away. I was holding her hand, and she's still bleeding. So we crossed the border. We went to California, Southern California, and then we went, went to San Diego, Los Angeles, Bakersfield. We ended up in Napa Valley in the wine country. And I, start, I didn't even finish high school, so I went to elementary school, junior high, and I had to work. So when I had to work there, um, I worked in the fields, and then I worked as a waiter in an Italian restaurant. And I remember this Italian-American guy, short guy. Uh, I did something wrong, I made a mistake, and he started calling me names. You freaking Mexican, you guys don't know how to do anything. After that, I took my apron out and threw him at his face, and I was about to kick his ass, to be honest with you. But God, God was there like, Omar, don't do it. So I didn't do it. So I went home. I went crying, and I told my mom. I promised my mom that day I will never work for anybody else anymore. I'm going to have my own company, my own business. And like other parents, yeah, right. She was like, Omar, I know you're going to have your own business. She believed in me. She was the only one that believed in me the whole time, even though I have problems with alcohol and drugs. I was a gang member for a long time. I loved to fight. I was fighting on the street. I mean, I have so many scarves everywhere. 
but, but she, she trusted me because she loved me. So after that, I always had in my mind and in my heart to come to Mexico and live my Mexican dream. I was living an American dream that didn't belong to me. I want to come to Mexico and live my Mexican dream in my land. So I came here. That's me before that. That's me in 2012 on the beach. My brothers they were like, are you crazy? You're going to go to Mexico? What are you going to do there? Dude, if I work as hard as I work in California, if I do it in Mexico, I'm going to make it too. They, they couldn't believe it. But it was one thing. I always believe in myself. So I come to Mexico and live my Mexican dream. Finally open up a little business, which is Blue Green Mexico. It's a nursery. I'm a gardener. I start my business with $50, 1,050 pesos only. And I was walking on the beach, and I find that. You guys know what it is? Sargasso. Gracias a Dios, sargasso. I fell in love with that plant right away. I was like, wow, it's so amazing. As a gardener, it was more than that. And I was doing yard maintenance. I was doing all this uh, landscape business. I started making fertilizers, compost with sargasso. And people were like, oh, it smells really bad. Yeah, it smelled too when I was using drugs. Nobody wanted me around it. It's like, don't hang out with Omar. He's a bad influence. Don't hang out with him. Don't hang out with him. Because people were very rude. You know, people we are. We're always like, oh, watch out, he's gay, or he's a drug addict, or he's an alcoholic. Or we, never, we never look into ourselves. So I finally got a contract to start cleaning the beach of Puerto Morelos, Playa del Carmen, and Tulum. And that's what I, that's what I said. Man, this is my Mexican dream. I had 300 employees helping 300 families. That was like my moment right, right there. Signed a contract for three months. And guess what? 20 days later, some guy that worked in the government, corrupto, casi no hay aquí en Mexico, but anyway, I mean, it was one. So they took the job away from me, and I was crying so bad. Not only because I didn't have a job anymore, because I had my, my nursery, my business. I was very upset for these 300 people. I don't, know what to I don't know how to tell them, sorry, but you don't have a job anymore. So for this guy that worked in the government, they took the, the contract away from me. I went home that day, very pissed off. I sat down, and I started to cry and cry and cry. I fell asleep. So when I fell asleep, I started seeing a movie of my life. The really hard moments. The brain is very smart. Sometimes we don't want to remember stuff that, it, that it's painful, right? So I remember when my mom used to sell, she used to sell blood in the hospitals to give us something to eat, me and my brothers. We ate from the markets, from the trash. We didn't have a house. She passed away 18 years ago, Angelita. And me and my brothers, we wouldn't be able to buy a house from her. And it was painful. It was something very painful in my heart that I couldn't do it. So with a sargasso and, and, and take, take out the contract out of me, I started living like a movie of my life. And it was very awful. I wanted to wake up, but I couldn't. But it was two things that make me very happy. And one of them, it was my mom, Angelita, and the other one, it was my grandparents' house. So what I did with that, before that, what I did with that sargasso, it was this. I'm going to show it to you guys. I did a block. This is a sarga block, 40% sargasso, 60% organic material, made in Mexico. I won first place in Austria, in Vienna, in Orlando. I have to sell my car, but I went there and brought first place. As a Mexican, I was so happy. Thank you. First thing when I did Sarga Blog, I didn't, I didn't thought of, I'm going to start selling and I'm going to be rich and I'm going to be famous. I didn't know anything. So what I did, it was that. Casa Angelita. 
la primera casa en el mundo hecha de sargazo. The first house on the entire planet made out of sargazo. And it's a replica of my grandparents' house in Ocotlán, Jalisco. And I named it Angelita because she was everything to me. She's still everything to me. She taught me how to be responsible, how to be hard worker, honest, and help. Because even though she didn't have any money, she was always helping people. So I make the house. I became famous. A lot of people call me Señor Sargazo. Yo así como que, hola, Señor Sargazo, hi. When I went to, um, when I went to, to Europe, it's funny because when the, the immigration guy, because I didn't know it, it has such a high impact what I was doing. It's like, hi, Mr. Sargazo, how you doing? I was like, oh my God, good. So everybody knew me. So the first thing I wanted to do after building the house, I remember of, of, I remember of my childhood. Instead of seeing the business and money that, that we're all interested, I just had it in my heart to start donating houses for people that didn't have a house. In the name of Mama, Angelita, I started donating houses. This is the house number 13 that I donated last December for this single mom with two little girls. And the business is coming along too. I'm not saying that it's not. Now I'm, I'm in Belize, Republica Dominicana. I went to Africa already. Uh, the, um, Puerto Rico, Barbados, Blue Green and Sarga Block, it's a brand already. And we're changing a lot of people's lives. And, a lot, and, and one stuff that I, that, I wanna sh that I wanna share to you is five things that I remember. And it's keep walking forward and see where you wanna go. Number two, Sometimes we have to look back and see where we're coming from. Number three, let's look to the sides and see who was with you in the hard or difficult moments. Number four is to look down. That way you don't step at, at anybody's person. Look down that way you don't do that. And the most important thing, look up because there's somebody there looking for you all the time. So, my name is Omar Vasquez. I'm from Ocotlan, Jalisco, and I want to finish with this. A lot of things expire. Milk can expire, eggs can expire, ham, food, a lot of stuff. The only thing that won't expire is dreams. So, keep dreaming. Thank you for your time. Y Dios los bendiga. Adios.